Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in your midst today. And I'm glad to see what God is doing in this place. It is amazing. And I want to thank God for my son, my nephew, my friend, the only junior brother that I have. I happen to be the junior brother of the mother. The same father, the same mother. Can't you see his face? You are saying, ah, look at my face. Look at his face. Huh? He, he, he just decided to be dark because of his father. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I want to thank God for my daughter. She's, she's uh, I don't know how to qualify or quantify her. She's, she's full of, of goodness. I prayed one prayer when I came to their home that God will touch her that she will not overfeed me. <laughs> and I thank God that God is answering that prayer. <laughs> he wake me up around 10 o'clock. Uncle, the table is set. I said, when? What for? <laughs> but I'm sure I will not gain weight before I leave North America. <laughs> Just lift your hand before the great one. Exalt him and adore him. Let's give him all the praise and glory. Adore him, adore him, adore him. We worship you, Yahweh of history. We worship you, the only true and the only wise God. Be exalted here today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We dedicate this service to you, the only one and the only true God. And I place this demand upon you that there will be no single man or woman that is here today and those that will hear me hereafter that their life will ever remain the same. Amen. Do all it takes you, the almighty God to do, in the midst of your people today. Amen. And I vow I will not share your glory with you. I will remember to return it back to you. Amen. Save the unsaved today. Amen. Heal the sick today. Amen. Deliver the oppressed today. Amen. Encourage the discouraged today. Amen. At the end, the glory will be yours. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Just take your Bible with me before you are seated. Let's read some few scriptures before we sit down. If you have a Bible in the house, shout it. I am a believer. I am a believer. Don't lie. Oh. <laughs> and if you don't have a Bible in the house, say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. Amen. So we're reading from Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10.38 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing few healing all that were oppressed of God. You sure? Yes. Which translation is your own? <laughs> and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yes. And God was with him. Amen. Acts 2 36. Acts 2 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Amen. Amen. And finally, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Hebrews 13, 8. 
Jesus Christ. Can we read this one together? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and If you believe that, let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm preaching and teaching this morning. I don't just want to get you excited. But I want to believe God to deposit something in you that you will live with for the rest of your life. So it's not enough to just shout, excite you. But I want to take some time to teach within the period I am assigned. So I'm teaching this morning, I'm preaching on the subject, the immutable Jesus. Let me hear it. If they ask you after the service, what was the theme or the topic of the message? Don't say the man can speak grammar. <laughs> what is the theme of our message this morning? Amen. Amen. Another word for immutable is unchangeable. Amen. We're looking briefly at introduction. We're going to look at the trinity of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Allow me, I'm going to use some technical terms that I will bring to our level. We are going to look at the hypostatic union and the kenosis of Jesus. Then we're going to look at, under that, the kenosis of Jesus, the hypostasis of Jesus, the immutability of Christ. Then we're going to look at anointing. What is anointing? We've been hearing, Lord, anoint me, anoint me, anoint my work. What is anointing? We are going to look at the person and the power of the Holy Spirit and the forms of God's anointing. And finally, what is the essence of the anointing? And we are going to round it up in conclusion. I pray that you will be blessed beyond measure today in Jesus' name. Now, the coming of the Son of God into this world is the highest expression of God's revelation. We all believe that there is God. If surely there is God, he must make himself known to us. And in the true sense of it, has he made himself known? Yes. yes. He has revealed himself in nature. And we call this one general revelation of God. But if God has limited himself to general revelation, revelation in nature, revelation in what we can see. The Bible says the invisible things of God are made manifest by the thing that we can see. All right? He has also made himself manifest in our human conscience. There is no man that can just do evil to his neighbor, to other people, and just go scot free. The consciousness of God in him will bring accusation. Whether he or she accepts it, it is there. That is part of of the general revelation. But if God has limited himself to this level of revelation, we will have been confused because the interpretation of that revelation will be left to individual and we will arrive at wrong conclusions. So God decided to reveal himself in another way, in a clearer form, in his word. In what? In his, word. in his word. And in the word of God, we have two. We have the living word of God. And we have the written word of God. God decided to document his existence, his love, his power, his glory. So that from time to time, you can go into it. And the written word of God is the Bible. The 66 canonized books of the Bible, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. All those other books that are known as Apocrypha, they were human invented. They don't have any spiritual value whatsoever. But the 39 books of the Old Testament, which is the same as the 22 books of the Jewish people, form the canonized book of the Old Testament. And then the New Testament, we have 27. So this is the written revelation of God. But listen to me, beloved. 
if God has led us only with the evidence of the written revelation, we will have lacked relationship with him. But God decided to come down in the form of man and dwell among us, lived with us, ate with us. And what is the essence of that? To know about your feeling. To know what you are going through as to be able to know how to present it to the Father. If you are not in my shoe, you will not know what I am going through. If you are not in my situation, there is no way you can explain it. If you want to save an ant from danger, it's running into fire and you are telling the ant, don't go, don't go. There is no way you can understand your language. Because it's not part of your class. And all you need to do to save it is to become like an ant. And by the time you put yourself in the position of an ant, you'll be able to save him. This is the essence of incarnation. God became man and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Amen. Why did he need to come? He came because the devil has already poisoned our mind about whom God is. That God is not good. That God is responsible for all our calamities. All the evils that are happening in our worlds. The people in the hospital. The people in the psychiatric home. The people that are just dying by earthquake and the rest of them. The devil has made us to know. And poison our mind that God is not good. But God decided to come down and said, I don't want to just speak over there and say I am good, I am here. And I'm here to demonstrate to you that I'm good. And I come here today by his anointing. And by the power that raised him from the dead, you will experience the goodness of God. Before I finish this message, that thing which the doctor has declared impossible in your life, he who has the final say is going to make it possible. Yeah. And all the doors that have been closed against you, that have left you struggling here, you can only count the number of years you have spent here, but you don't have anything to show for it. I come by the power of his covenant that every door that will be closed against you, they shall be open. I said they shall be open. I want you to know that God is not responsible for evil in the universe. It is the devil. Are you here with me? The devil wants to deny the goodness of God. That God is not good to you. You pay your tithe. You go to church. You pray. You love God. But you know what you are going through. You know your tears. You know your sorrows. You know how you have been cheated. How people have scammed you. But I'm here today as a living witness. That that situation is turning around. So the devil is the source of evil. Is the source of all calamities in Genesis chapter 3. But in chapters 1 and 2, when God created man, the Bible said God created man in his own image. After his own likeness, you are like God. You are not like an ape. You are not like a devil. You are like God. You are made in his image and after his likeness. Now, let me make you to understand this and know this. That when God was calling, I mean, was creating other things, he was calling them forth by his divine fiat. Divine fiat is another that is given that cannot be reversed or revoked. Are you here with me today? So, God was calling them forth and they were coming forth. But when God wanted to create man, he called the council of heaven. If somebody has told you that you are not important, tell that person he's a liar. 
If the devil has been witnessing to your heart that you are not important, tell him you are a big liar. So when God wanted to create man, he called the council of heaven, the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, come now, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And the Bible says God did an artistic work in, the, in his own perfection form. He formed man from the dust of the earth. And he breathed into him the breath of life. And man became a living being. You are a living being. You are ordained to live. You are appointed to live. And by the power of the Most High God, you are going to live. Everything that has been dead in you today, I come by the power of life. And by the covenant of life, you will live. There are many of you that are already expecting 2018. I went into my closet for about two days to seek the face of God for what he has in store for 2018. But God knew completely I'm not yet interested in 2018 because there are a lot of packages that are still waiting for 2017 for you to receive. And I want to tell you that before 31st of this year, you are going to be celebrated. Those who have been looking down on you, they are going to look up unto you. Those who are saying you are going to become an object of mockery before the end of this year, they will come for your thanksgiving. So God created man as the height of his creation. And he handed over everything in this terrestrial shore into his hand. As an ambassador. That's whom you are. Amen. A royal ambassador. Yes. To represent the in- interests of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. That whatever you bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. Amen. So, But God has to show himself to be God. And God has to demand love. From his creature. He told him, eat everything here. But the day you eat this one, you are going to die. That is a symbol of our tithe. Are you here with me? We've been hearing a lot of things that have been going around on the internet. Tithe is not biblical. Tithe is not of the New Testament. You see, things that has to do with God is not philosophical. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is revelation. And it takes people that have the mind of God to discern it. When the devil wants to take a man or a group of people captive, he will want you to resolve into your mind, not into your spirit. Because the things of the spirit is not something you can understand with your mind. They are spiritual things and they must be spiritually discerned. We have come to the end of the age. We are running to the end of the age. When people are looking for teachers, prophets, and apostles that will tell them what they want to hear, not what God has to say. That is that moment. So God told them, this is the reservation for my honor, like your tithe. The only way you can assure God that it's your source is to set aside the minimum of 10% for him. And that is your divine insurance. Yes, if you don't pay tight, your life will be tight. Yes, sir. Right. You'll be struggling for the rest of your life. Because you are not putting God into place. So God told, told them, the day you eat of it, you will die. So in Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 to 5. Genesis chapter 3, 4 to 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. That means God is not sincere. God is a liar. God did not mean what he said. God does not love you enough. It is still the same method that is using over and over. It doesn't matter. If you don't pay your tithe, just love God. Things will still be going on 
with you. That is the lie of the devil. I know many of you will not like this. He said, bring all tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. Prove me now. There is no place in the scripture where God said, prove me. But in this, he said that we open the windows of heaven for you. And I will pour out blessing that you will not be able to take it. But the devil told them, you will not die. You will surely not die. Look at the other lie he told. You shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 44, he said, you are of your father the devil, and the loss of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth. In him. He doesn't abide in the truth. Because all his mechanism. His composition. His chemistry. Is devoid of truth. And we have his agent all over today. That are spreading lies all about. They get out of the scripture. They bring the philosophy of men. So the Bible says. The devil does not have any truth. Any iota of truth in him, he is a liar and the father of it. He's a liar and he's a father of it. Another, another passage says, when he speaks lies, he speaks his native language. <laughs> your native language is expression of your nature, your bringing. The environment you are brought in. By the grace of God, I've been an Italian now for almost 15, 20 years. But when I'm speaking Italian before all those students that were brought up, they will need, you, many of you will say, oh, oh God, you speak this language very well. Oh. But the children will tell you, <laughs> daddy, daddy is trying, he's trying. <laughs> because I was not brought up there. I was just adopted. So the day by nature is a lie. And anybody that hears truth is of the devil. And that is the lie he's spreading about. And when the devil brings the lie to you, you believe him, he will steal from you. And when he steals from you, he will kill what he has told him. He will destroy it, take it away from circulation. Protect what God has given to you. Be jealous over it. Be very, very jealous over it. It's a thief. So the devil has displayed the wrong image of God. That God is not good. God is very bad. But Jesus came to come and tell us, this is whom God is. He who has seen me has seen the Father. I am the epitome of truth. I'm the express image of his person. I am from him. So he came to do that. And to restore back what the devil has stolen from us. He said the devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it. No. No. Enjoy overflow. overflowing in abundance and I'm here today by the grace of God your joy shall overflow all those secret weeping they are for the night your day of joy has come weeping and joy it is just for a night it's just for a moment but the hour of your celebration has come. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus came to tell us whom the Father is. Amen. And I want you to know and understand this. 
that all that Jesus Christ did here, healing the sick, raising the dead, and the rest of them, he did not do them as the son of God. He did them as the son of man. And I'm going to make you to see this. In John chapter 14 verse 12. John chapter 14 verse 12. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. You are going to see the demonstration of it here today. The word that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. Amen. Amen. When we are talking about God, we as Christians, we believe in only one and only true God. Amen. Amen. But this Godhead, this nature, this divine substance exists equally only in three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And many have accused us that we believe in three gods. No! We believe in one and only true God. But this nature, this essence, this divine substance exists only in three persons. Sir, can you come forward? That's your wife. Come, darling. Come. Sorry, I have to demote you a little. Come. <laughs> yeah, just stay here. Yeah, just stay here. What is the name, sir? Ngozi. Ngozi, your name? Yes, sir. Ngozi? Yes, sir. Kedu? Okay. Ah, yes. Men also, they be Ngozi. Okay, look at Brother Ngozi. This one forms Ngozi's family. How many families are here? But how many people are there? Thank you. This is not three families. This is the father, the wife, and the daughter. Just one family called Ngozi. Ndidi Ngozi. Amen. Amen. Then look at these three people in another dimension. How many people do we have here? Three. Talk to me. Three. Shout it. Three. But how many human beings do we have here? Three. Can you see the confusion? What makes Brother Ngozi to be a human being is what makes Sister Ngozi to be a human being. Is what makes Dr. Ngozi, that's why I say I would demote you. <laughs> is what makes Dr. Ngozi to be a human being. So we have just one human being here. The same humanity. But existing equally in three people. She's a human being. She's a human being. He's a human being. The difference between them is not in nature. In nature, they are the same. They are equal. What makes him to be a human being is what makes them to be human being. So just one humanity in three persons. Thank you. So we have only one God, only one divine substance, equally present in the Father, in the Son, and in the Holy Ghost. And we saw this during his baptism, where he got anointed. When they put him into water, the heaven was open. The son was in the water. The father spoke from heaven. And the spirit of God came upon him as the anointing. One God in three persons equally. 
define Trinity. Are you here with me? We need to have this understanding. This is the basis of our faith. This is what we stand for. Jehovah Witness will tell you that Jesus is a God in the form of the devil. When you read their Bible, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was a God. Jesus was, is not a God, it's God. They believe that the Holy Ghost is just God's active force in creation and redemption. If the Holy Ghost is a force, how does it come into equal stand with the Father and the Son? Are you here with me? Yes, he said, go and baptize them. In the name of the Father, the name is one. And it stands for the substance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit cannot be anything else. When he said, come now, let us make man in our image. The only people in that council was the father as the supreme head. And the son and the Holy Ghost. And we could see them now in the baptism of Jesus. And Jesus said, I and my father, we are one. In another place, he said, my father is greater than me. How is he greater? In office. Because he sent the son. He loved the word and sent the son. He who sent you is greater than you. And when he was going away, he said, I will not leave you alone. I will send another comforter. The Greek word for another day is alas. It's like me saying, I'm going to take this pastor to another place. I will send another pastor. Saying I will send another pastor, it means with the same capacity. So the Holy Spirit is not inferior to Jesus and it's not inferior to the Father. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are not just mere offices, they are persons. Hallelujah. Amen. So God anointed him. Why did he need the anointing? That's a big question we have to answer ourselves. So I'm coming to what we call the kenosis theory or theology. Permit me today. Yes, sir. All right? The word kenosis comes from the Greek word kenon. The Bible says in Philippians 2.7, he made himself of no reputation. The word reputation there means canon. What do you mean by canon? It means, in another way, another translation says, he emptied himself. And so people believe that when Jesus was coming from above, he put all his glory all it takes for him to be God, he put them in heaven. That's a lie of the devil. He only mask them. Comes this and goes. Choma. Okay, forgive me. <laughs> Just face the congregation. Choma is a lady. In a theater act, she could act as a man. How will she be able to do it? She will mask herself. Do you understand what I'm saying? So she will change her voice. She will talk like a man. Yes. Yes, I'm the husband. But by nature, who is she? A woman. I'm masking herself. Taking the costume of a man, does it change the nature? No. It has only masked her. That is the canon of Jesus. By nature, he is God. 
But he put on the likeness of human nature in order to be part of us. To know what you are going through. To understand your feeling. Not theoretically, but practically. As to be able to intercede at the right hand of the Father adequately for you. So he emptied himself. He can know himself. That is where the word kenosis. I don't have enough time to dispute many kenosis theology that people have propounded. propounded. But Jesus masked himself. The one that was in the womb of Mary was the one that created Mary. And so people thought it was Mary that was carrying him, but he was carrying Mary. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? That is the kenosis of Jesus. It's like my son today chose and said, Uncle, would you mind speaking to us on Sunday? And I said, I don't mind. If he has not given me the offer, I will still come here to worship. I will sit down wherever he wants me to sit. And if it is possible, I will even choose my seat. I want to sit at the back. Do you understand what I'm saying? By the time he finishes his message, his message, he will probably say, we have my uncle here. My uncle is not my total identity. is part of it. I am a preacher. I am a teacher. I am a prophet. I am an apostle. In the tradition of the ancients. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I would have mocked myself. Probably he would just say, oh, let uncle help us to round up the, pray, uh, the service in prayer. And I'll pray. And some of you begin to say, this man looks like a man of God. But he decided to manifest me this morning. Yes. That the glory that God has put in me might flow into you. Yes. That is the kenosis of Jesus. Yes. He did not leave any of the glory in heaven. Then we come to what we call the hypostasis of Jesus. The hypostasis of Jesus is the union, the full union of deity and humanity without any of them diminishing. That means in his hypostasis, he was 100% God. I'm 100% man. Am I communicating something? 100% God. The Bible says, though in form he was God, but he taught it not robbery. That's a good translation, but a better translation says, he decided not to abuse it. He was God, but he decided not to abuse it. You know, there are lots of people that abuse their position today. They misuse it. Especially the politicians. I don't know whether we have them in the house here today. They will promise a lot of things and they will do another thing once they come in. Abuse of privilege. He was in the form of God. But he decided not to abuse it. And he took upon himself the nature, the form of a man. So in him was the fullness of the Godhead. And in him was the fullness of humanity. The difference between his humanity and our humanity, our own is falling, it's not, his own is not falling. Amen. But full, but not falling. Our own is full, but falling. So that's the reason why he needed the anointing. He depended absolutely, entirely, on the Holy Spirit and on the Father. You hear him say, of myself I can do nothing. As I hear, so I do. The reasons for confusions in our homes, in our marriages and in our church, 
everybody feel I am an adult. I know what to do. I know how best to do it. So some people find it difficult to go for counseling, to allow, what will pastor tell me that the Holy Spirit cannot tell me? He has Holy Ghost, I have Holy Ghost. Your own is human ghost. (laughs) Are you here with me? He depended on the Father for everything. He could have healed every sick person during his time. But he listened to the Father. He would have rushed to Bethany to save Lazarus from dying. He waited for another two days. And after he had been entombed for four days and he was thinking, he said, let us go and wake him up. Many a times you want him to rush to you and say, my daughter, I'm bringing you out. No, he wants you to go through the fire. But in the midst of the fire, his glory will manifest. So he was anointed of the Holy Ghost as a human being. To be able to fulfill his mission. And the Bible says he was anointed of the Holy Ghost and of power. What is anointing? Anointing is not what we can invent. It's something that invites us. It's not just oil. Oil is an emblem of it. The anointing is the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost. And this money is going to manifest himself. Amen. Everyone that is held captive, everyone that is held in bondage, everyone that has been laboring without harvest, there shall be a manifestation today. Amen. You are coming back next Sunday for an overwhelming testimony. Amen. I mean, no have the time to lay hands on you but the hand of Yahweh is moving all over this place. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is different from the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person but his manifestation in power and in glory of God is what is called anointing. It is difficult to define the word anointing. But when you see it, you know it. That this is the presence of God. This is the hand of God. This is the power of God. And every believer, whether you are a pastor or you are not a pastor, you need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every day, every moment of your life, we need the anointing. It's the anointing that makes the difference. When you are anointed at your place of work, you become untouchable. All those wishes and wizards and those that are envying you for no reason, you become a pillar that if they move you, the foundation of the organization will collapse. That's what the anointing does. We do too much talking and less prayer. We involve ourselves in other people's matter that does not concern us than involving ourselves in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Jesus did not talk anyhow. He doesn't talk about people. He confronts people. You Pharisees. You hypocrites. He doesn't talk about it behind them. He talks it before them. A backbiter cannot progress in life because he's always at the back. So he was anointed of the Holy Ghost. And when he was anointed, what was he doing? He was going about doing good. Going about doing good. Doing good. Good things are good in life. When your spiritual life is right with God, when you don't maintain double standard, when you are in the church, you can make noise, you can cut passages. But at home, you are lukewarm. That's not good enough. 
You need to bring up your spiritual life. You need to maintain some spiritual consistency. Be on fire in the church and outside the church. That is the good thing. To have mental sanity. To be able to process things and come out with good results. There are many of you who want to die in working in the company. Pastor, pray for me. They want to sack me. I pray they will sack you. Because when one door is not closed, the other will not be open. There are some of you, you are bigger than where you are. And they are threatening you, and you trouble pastor. Pastor, pray for me. He will say, I send the word. Those words will not work today because God is about to lift you. You are telling God to promote you there. Should he kill the next person there? Good things are good. To have good health. Not just to be healed, but to have good health is good. To have good food on your table is good. To live in a country and be free. You want to travel? You are not just speaking in tongues to travel illegally. It's their good things. And I've come today to announce to you that deposit of good things have come your way today. Every door to good things that have been closed against you I come with the key of David. They shall be open. You deserve good things in life. You deserve it. Believe me, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. it. Good things in life. You deserve it. And you can receive it. Listen to me, as many people as have visited evil water in your family, in order to empty you, in order to hold you captive, Holy Ghost fire shall answer for you. There are some of you that are here. When you change your phone number, they know the new one. And they call you, you say, ah, Mama, who gave you my phone number? He says, oh, you don't want me to know your phone number. That's why you change it on so-so-so date. Because they have spiritual network. Every network of evil that have been mapped against your life, I command them to catch fire. He was going about doing good and healing. All, not few. Healing, all. Feeling, healing, all. And the Bible makes us to know the root of oppression for sickness. Woman, your weeping has endured for a night, but your joy has come in the morning. Yeah, you shall weep no more. The oil of gladness shall be released unto you today in the name of Jesus yeah you shall be celebrated it is not yet over a great day is coming your life good things are coming your way come on shout hallelujah in this house he was going about healing I don't know how many of you are here today you have good face. You have good dress. But you know the sickness that is eating you up. You know it. Doctors have put you on permanent medication. But I'm terminating them here today. By the living word of God. All those sicknesses that have held your life captive. 
the anointing shall break the yoke. The theologians will want you to believe that the age of saints and wonders, the age of miracles have passed because they want to keep you in bondage. If that age has passed, then the scripture should pass away. We should not have the revelation of God with us any longer. We should just be living on philosophers and the vain theologians. But I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Yes. He's the same today. He's the same forever. That's what we are talking about is immutability. When we talk about his immutability, we are saying he's unchangeable. Yes. What he did yesterday, he can do it here. Yes. I've seen God performing miracles that is beyond what any man can perceive. And I know with the word you have heard today, the healing power of God is coming upon you. Yes. There was a lady that the doctor said that she can never be pregnant in life. That she doesn't have enough blood to sustain pregnancy. And she started looking for blood tonic. But the more she takes it, the more the thing will be wasted away. By the mercy and the grace of God, I pray with them. The firstborn today is over 24 years. It's in the university. They have three children. That God will visit you. Every womb that are blocked shall be open. You are ordained and appointed to be fruitful. Amen. You shall be fruitful. Amen. I went to another church. God told me to tell the people all your medication, put it aside. Little did I know of a lady that was having HIV that had reached the extreme case. And the doctors were about to write a letter to her. We can't help you any longer. She came to the congregation that day. I brought them forward. I prayed. She came to me later and said, Man of God, I am HIV positive. She came to my station. I anointed her and prayed for her. And I told her to tell the doctor to do the test again. And the test was run again. And the result came out on the 13th of June 2014. On the, 20th, on the 14th of it, we were having minister's conference in our church where all our pastors all over gathered together. And this woman called me, she was crying. And I said, what is it all again? He said, the doctor said, we wanted to write you that we have reached the end, we can go with your case. But what we are seeing here in the new test, we just run. What we are seeing here is, did you go to any doctor? She said, yes. He said, who is that doctor? Because in our medical history, we have never seen this. This is going to be your testimony today. Yes. That we have never seen it. Yes. That somebody with HIV that has gone to the extreme is totally healed. Yes. That same Jesus. We do your own today. Amen. That same Jesus. We do your own today. Amen. I was preaching in the southern part of Italy. And I said people who want to stand in the gap for their family, they should come. People who are sick, they should come. All the people that came, the Lord just healed them by his grace. But there was a case in Nigeria. Somebody who was at coma. And the whole family, they have given up. If I stand here today to tell lie to you, may God remove my name from the book of life. We prayed on Saturday, Sunday morning. She called and called and called and just concluded, my sister is dead. But early in the morning, the same lady that she thought was dead, pick her phone and call. When she was giving the testimony, I told her, please, we are not here to joke. Don't come and tell me. He said, Daddy, put off my hands. I cannot lie to you. My sister called me this early morning. My sister called me this early morning. Jesus, the same yesterday. The same today. The same forever. 
It doesn't matter the name they call the sickness. Jesus has solution to it. I welcome you to your healing today. Welcome you to your deliverance. Lift up your two hands. And say, Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. Let it be unto me. Talk to the Lord. Let it be unto me according to your word. According to your precious promises. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. Yes, cry out to him. Say, call on to me, I will answer you. Shake it, pray for name we have prayed I want to pray with you I want to pray with you if you are sick in your body you are oppressed in one area of your lives or the other I want you to find your way forward I want to pray with you just come don't let somebody tell you and if you have somebody that is in the hospital that cannot come here today just you want to stand in the gap for the person you can be here but those of you that are here for your own miracle your healing just come just come if you are standing in the gap for somebody it means you don't have a case on your own but if you have a case and you want to stand in the gap you better kill your own first get get closer get closer get closer get closer Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is going to do a quick walk here. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Look at me here. Can you give me attention now, please? Give me attention. No music. Just make sure you move forward. Move forward. Move forward. I want you to know those of you that are in front. It's not because you are a war sinner that such calamity has come upon you. God loves you. Your case is not hopeless. Amen. Believe my word as a servant of God. Your testimony is now. Amen. Every door that has been closed before you, they shall be opened. Amen. I come into this house with a key. And that key is called the key of the house of David. Amen. That opens and no man can close. Amen. Your case is settled today. That is all you need to hear. All you need to know. Amen. Your matter, your case is settled Amen. today. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Don't close your eyes yet. Lift up your two hands. Lift up your two hands. And then look at me. Put your right hand on the top of your head. Your right hand on the top of your head. And lift up your left hand above your head. Yes, you are ready for your miracle now. Are you ready? Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You see, I'm not holding any akashif. My mouth is free from everything. Huh? I was preaching in Jalingo. I was sweating like no man's business. I refused to use akashif. Because some men of God, if throw akashif at you, you will fall. Akashif from mommy water, you fall. When you fall, you rise up and carry another greater problem. My hand is free. Amen. Do you understand me? Yes. So lift up your left hand to take your miracle. I stand here by your authority. Thou great God that has the final say. You say, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. We shall heal the sick and deliver the oppressed. I come against every spirit of infirmity. I come against every spirit that have heard your people. On this strange altar. In the marine world, in the atmospheric heaven, 
in the wilderness. Every altar that have heard your blessing, I command them cast fire. Cast fire. Cast fire. Every evil covenant, every evil agreement, right from your mother's womb to the time you were born and to the time you have started growing. Every evil covenant, I cancel them here today. By the blood of Jesus, I cancel them today. Every spirit that makes you to labor without harvest, every spirit of oppression, every power of the wicked one, I command your power to be broken. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Lose your victim. And let them go. And fulfill destiny. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity. Whether you are called fibroid. Whether you are called cancer. Whether you are called migraine. Whether pain at the back. Whether problem with the eyes. Whatever your name may be. I have a name that is above you. And that is the name of Jesus. Release your victim. Go. And don't come back again. Receive your healing now. By his stripes. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing now. In the name of Jesus. Those of you that have been struggling with your paper, your document. Those of you that have been struggling with your job. Those of you that have been struggling with your marriage. I come, I command them to come to struggling today. Receive grace to flourish. Receive grace to be joyful. Receive grace to be victorious. I bless you in the name of the Lord. I bless the work of your hands. I bless your health. I bless your spiritual life. I bless every aspect of you. Your joy shall overflow. As the name of this church is, so your destiny will be. Your joy shall overflow. In the name of Jesus. Every womb that is barren shall be fruitful. Every low spam count on the part of any man, there shall be restoration. Every premature ejaculation, you have come to an end tonight. Receive your healing. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the eyes of the Lord wash over you. May the hand of the Lord be strong over you. I release the hand of the Most High God Amen. upon your life. Amen. The hand of the Lord will go with you. Amen. And be with you. Amen. And keep joy upon joy over Amen. your life. Amen. Your joy shall overflow. Amen. And as many of you as are standing in the gap for any member of your family. I decree healing. Amen. I decree deliverance. Amen. I send the word of life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I bless this congregation. You shall overflow. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. You will go from coast to coast. From shore to shore. The glory of God will rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go we raise up faithful branches for you. Amen. And it shall be well with you. Amen. I bless the pastor. 
bless his wife bless the work of their hands lord we enrich them on every side i decree over all this congregation that you will not die this year you will not enter into trouble this year it shall be well with you thank you heavenly father lift your two hands and bless the name of the lord just bless the name of the lord bless his holy name go back to your seat go back to your seat go back to your seat hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah